Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for our message this evening is from the Gospel of Luke, the second chapter. Here are these two, uh, a couple of key verses here. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is, you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. This is our text. They expected it to be a night like most others. The shepherds had gathered their sheep into their entrapment there, their pens. And uh, they thought it was going to be a long, boring night. Boring is actually good, a good thing, because if there was a lot of excitement, that would probably mean that a thief or a wolf had, had broken into the pen, and the sheep uh, would have gone into panic. That would not be good. On this particular night, when most of Bethlehem is sleeping, an angel appears to these shepherds with a startling announcement. Fear not, for, I bring, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. This announcement and everything that followed is why we and Christians the world over celebrate tonight. We celebrate because Jesus came as a gift from God. He is God's gift for you. Christmas celebrations can, can vary a great deal from time to time and place to place. For example, there are a wide variety of hymns and carols that are in use throughout the world. Also, Christmas ce uh, um, celebrations can vary considerably depending on what part of the world you're in. Um, there are customs that differ in their parties and their plays they put on, school and, and uh, church uh, events. There's differences in the caroling and the, they sing and the cards they sing and the lights and the trees and the, the, the uh, Christmas dinners and, and many other things. But for us, it's hard to imagine Christmas without some of these things. But it's probably harder to remember or imagine anything about Christmas without having gifts that are given and received. From the very first St. Nicholas, who was a very real man, who was a pastor of a church in the 4th century, who was said to have given anonymous, anonymously a, a, a gift of gold to enable some young maidens to be married. Since then, Christians and now most of the world have given gifts at Christmas time. Even in extreme poverty, parents try to find something for the children. It might be something like a simple toy. It could be an article of, of homemade clothing. It might be something as simple as an orange when they were a rare luxury. But gifts do not make Christmas any more than candles make a birthday. Christmas is all about Jesus. He is the one gift that really matters. Without Jesus, you can have a holiday, but you can't have a holy day. You can receive good gifts without realizing that they come from Jesus, but you can't receive the perfect gift. Because he is that perfect gift. So who is this Jesus and why is he such a perfect gift? Well, the message of the angels to the shepherds that night um, said something that was so, talked about something that was so great and yet so helplessly small. They said you're going to find this Savior, who is Christ the Lord, wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. What God had promised Adam and Eve in the garden, what he had swore to, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, what he had kept repeatedly saying through the prophets during all the previous centuries, has finally come to pass. Christ the Lord is born. Born, the eternal Son of God could be born. Yes, that's the, that's the miracle of the whole thing here. The very creator of all things becomes a creature. He enters a, a human womb. He grows and develops into a little baby boy until it's time for him to enter this world. And then not with some grand pronouncement of his glory, but in the ordinary crying 
of a, any newborn baby. In fact, that's how the angels told the shepherds they would recognize him. They weren't going to find him in a, king's ca in a king's castle or palace in Jerusalem. They weren't going to find him surrounded by an entourage of religious dignitaries. Rather, they said, you will find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. The gift of God. In fact, God himself wrapped in a diaper. And so why do we call him a gift? Well, obviously, because he's given. He wasn't created. He wasn't invented by us. Worse yet, we don't deserve to have him come, for us, come to us. Well, in a sense, we do deserve him to come to us. We deserve him to come to us to reprimand us, to judge us, to condemn us. We deserve him to come to us with anger in his eyes and fire in his breath. You see, the human race was God's crowning act of creation. But also, it was his deepest disappointment. It was his proudest joy, but his greatest heartache. Because we disobeyed, disobeyed his will and sinned against him and against one another. So then why was he given? The angel says, to be a savior. Earlier, the, the angel instructed Joseph by saying you should call his name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. And so he came. And although the birth of Jesus was keeping a promise, it was not yet the fulfillment of the promise. There was more to come. Jesus would grow as a child. He would mature into manhood. And after he had completed his earthly ministry, he went to the cross to offer himself as a sacrificial payment for the sins of the whole world. And so it is that the, our sermon hymn, the, Christ, the old Christmas carol we just sang, it asks and it answers the question that is really at the heart of who this Jesus is. Listen to those words again. It says, what child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. And then it continues in verse 2. Nails and spears shall pierce him through. The cross be born for me, for you. Those words remind us of the terrible reality of, of why Jesus came and what he did to pay for our sins. After 33 years of perfect obedience to his heavenly father, the very people that he came to save were so enraged with him that they viciously killed him by nailing him to a cross. But little did they realize that by his innocent death, Jesus became the sacrificial offering to atone for the sins of the whole world so that all who believe in his saving work would receive the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. Forgiveness and eternal life purchased in one so that, he, so that they could be given as a gift when God gave his gift of Jesus. Of all the things that the angels told the shepherds that night, nothing is more important than two little words. Unto you. For what value does a gift have if it doesn't have your name on it? If it's not yours? Well, everything Jesus did, he did for you. His perfect obedience was for you. His innocent death, his glorious resurrection, and his eventual return to, to gather all of his own into his eternal presence. All of it was done for you. The gift of Jesus was there for the shepherds, even though they were among those who considered the bottom of the social ladder. But that same gift, that same Jesus, was also there for the wise men, men who were considered to be near the top of the ladder. And so it is today that Jesus assures you that this gift is also for you, whoever you are. Whatever your circumstances or station is, in life. This gift is for you. It's for the homeless and the poor. It's for the, those who are on welfare. It's for those who are barely getting by. It's for the family whose husband and wife are both
trying to hold down two jobs just to make, end me, uh, to make ends meet, where the children have to wear hand-me-downs and grocery shopping means a trip to the food bank. But understand, Jesus didn't come to fill your cupboard. He came to fill you with contentment and peace because the Savior who is Christ the Lord came for you. This gift is for you. If your heart is saddened at this time, even with all the joy all around us, it's, it's for you who are chronically ill, maybe worried about your doctor's appointments and tests, or overwhelmed with questions that seem to have no answer. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Now the Lord may not necessarily take away your illness, but he will give you the strength to bear it. And he does assure you that nothing can separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. This gift is for you who are celebrating Christmas with an empty place at the table because you've lost a loved one this past year. Nothing can replace the loss of a mother or a father or a brother or sister, let alone a child. Jesus doesn't suddenly restore that lost one to you. But he does comfort you with the assurance that those who die in the Lord will live with the Lord forever. And for that reason, we'll not only get to see them again, but we'll get to live with them again forever in the very presence of God and all who are His. You can trust this to be true because unto you a Savior has been born who is Christ the Lord. This gift is for you, even if you feel like you already have everything you desire, so that you do not put your hopes in the certainties of riches, but instead in God, in God who has given you a gift, the gift of His Son, Jesus Christ. Whether you are, whoever you are, and whatever your circumstance or station in life may be, this gift of the Savior is for you. Your name is on it. Whether you are rich or poor, He is your true treasure. Whether you're young or old, He is the one whose days are without number. Whether you're overwhelmed with loneliness or you're caught up in a large crowd, He is your true friend and companion. If you're going to be doing some traveling this holidays, you know how important it is to have certain things that you don't leave behind. Make sure you don't forget anything. Um, depending on where you're going and how long you've been gone, you want to make sure you don't forget your driver's license or money or credit cards or maybe even a passport. There may be a special gift that you're taking to, to bring to someone. But wherever you go in this world, there's something far more important that we cannot wrap or place under a tree. It's the precious life giving gift that God has given you. For unto you a Savior has been born, who is Christ the Lord. He is God's gift. Unwrap Him. Embrace Him. Own Him. And above all, take Him with you wherever you go. He is your greatest treasure. And He is for you. Amen. Please rise. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding fill your hearts and minds with love for your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who gave his life for you so that you too might have eternal life in his kingdom. Amen. <laughs>